Do you read the Rocky Mountain Outlook? It's got some interesting news in there. And that's uh, the youngest kid of one of my best friends on the front. So when I saw him, I'm like, well, I got to read that. That's right, because yeah. it's your community's newspaper, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Thank you very much. You've just seen. This is about the community. This is about showing people in the community what it's all about. We're right here in Canmore, in the beautiful sunshine in the Rocky Mountain summer, having an awesome coffee and one of our favorite reads, the Rocky Mountain Outlook. Because if you want to know what's going on in a community, you need to find out from the people that has business telling you what's going on in the community. And that's the Rocky Mountain Outlook. The community newspaper is supposed to be the voice of the community, the mirror of the community. So when people pick up that paper, they see their town reflected back to them in an accurate and unbiased fashion. We serve one very necessary function in a democracy, it's a necessary function in any small community, is that we bring information to people. Every word in the paper is about something local, by locals, for the locals. My job is to go to eight hour long council meetings and come out with a story that you're interested in reading. That's talent. We started it September 1st, 2001. I several times talked about how there was a real good business opportunity to come up the middle and do both communities and was told repeatedly, Banff people don't want to read about what's going on in Canmore, they couldn't care less. And meanwhile, half of Canmore is working in Banff. Because we shared a school board, we shared a health authority, we had the same MLA, same MP, half our town works there, half their town lives here. It was time. We just about didn't make it. We, we struggled for a year, a year and a half. And you'll notice actually on the front page of the outlook, the Glacier's Edge kids store downtown. She bought that spot and she paid every week in cash. So we had a steady source of income. Wind Tower Lodge at the time they were just starting up, they bought the back page. So we had the front and back and sometimes that was all it took to make payroll. The landlord let us pay when we had the money. Larry became the publisher, Bob was the sales rep, and I was the editor. We didn't pay ourselves for a long time. It was just a labor of love and, and a hope and a dream. I set out deliberately to only hire longtime locals. And I knew who they were, and I knew the talent in the town that I wanted. When the Outlook was first starting out, and I'd say, oh, I do cartoons for the paper, they'd say, which one? They don't say which one anymore. They know which one, because the Outlook is the paper of record for this valley. The readership started to follow us. Because it was free, we would just make sure that we were balanced. We didn't write stories about Banff's this and Canmore's this. It's the valley, and how those communities see themselves is that issue for them, but not the paper. The paper is a blanket. We knew that we had the combination to make this happen, but we had to get entry into the people that actually gave out the awards. So Anna tried to block our membership, repeatedly, because we had a staple. We had to staple the paper because the press, they couldn't run that many pages and get it all together for us unless they stapled it like a magazine. We fought it and we won. The very first year we were admitted, we won best paper in the province best front page, best editorial page, best sports section. We came home with all the hardware. That was very gratifying. It's easy to sit in a council meeting and take notes. Then you're a stenographer. It's really hard to walk away from the other bits that you hear and you've written in the margins. And your job one, when that regurgitation has happened, is to get on those ones that kind of overwhelming curiosity and need to be the voice. And I felt when I left the paper that I had left it in good hands, that there were enough awesome voices. We have a responsibility to tell the story accurately. You know, the truth is always coming in one or two different forms. It depends on your perspective. So we try very, very hard to make sure that both sides of that story is being told. When you're a small town community newspaper reporter, you have to be pretty much a mini expert in multiple things to tell the stories. 
So I always like doing the Outlook cartoon, and it's the only one I do an exclusive for. It's my community, and it's issues that I understand, and a lot of time it's issues that only we get. We don't really fit with the, the demographic of our riding in Alberta. I think that's what makes it Canmore and Banff and Lake Louise great communities because I can do an opinion that might tick off a few people, but I also know that most of the time I'm going to be hitting on topics and hitting on ideas that are representative of the whole valley. Like any small town community newspaper, you're involved with not only the stories but also the advertisers. Those are also people that you're dealing with on a daily basis. So content drives advertising. It's not the other way around. We have you know, seven people in our newsroom and we believe that if we write stories, we put the content out there, then the readership will follow and then the advertisers will follow. The advertising benefits every sector. Our real estate section can be like 15, 16 pages large. You constantly see people reading the newspaper. It makes my job a lot easier. There's a tremendous entrepreneurial spirit in this town. There's a lot of those young ones who come because of the rocks and the skiing, and then they gotta figure out, well, what am I gonna do to stay here? Everyone cares so much about being here because they want to be here, that they want to be involved in the decision-making process, which makes it for a much more engaged community. We also have a higher education level. As a community newspaper, we're dealing with the perfect audience. How often do you see people that are willing to stand up and expose themselves to their neighbours with their opinion, knowing that some of their friends aren't going to agree with them, but they feel strongly enough? If you've got a healthy letter section, you've still got a healthy paper reflecting the community back to them and you become a central hub where people go to get their information. If we continue doing what we're doing is, is producing great content and providing something that people want to read that we will get that readership. Now it's, it's taking the form of print and it has for a long long time but we're offering different products. I mean online, mobile, this is all a complete package that we're able to put together so we're not just a newspaper, we're a company that generates content. There's a myth and a misconception that newspapers are an old thing. They're still very current and they're adapting well in my opinion. You should start every week with a to-do list that is longer than the week. Stories that you need to get to. I think too many people show up and say, what am I doing today? You're always responsible to your readers, and if you are not reflecting what your community is doing, you might as well just go home. It's a vocational kind of business. If you're not called to it, then don't do it. Let somebody else who's hungry, keen, and doesn't mind working a bazillion hours because they recognize the importance of getting that information to the people, telling them what they maybe don't know it, but would be fascinated to hear. That's the voice of the community, that you need to have that, that desire. You too can become part of this journey. Come help us. Let's celebrate these businesses together. Donate to our site, www.forwardtofavor.com, and we will bring you more of these exciting programs.